right, folks. <clears throat> Welcome back to Adobe Live, everyone. How's everybody doing in the chat? I see so much excitement already, which is just such an awesome thing. Um, my name is Voodoo Val, um, and I am joined today for another episode um, of the Design Off with the wonderful and amazing Victor. Victor, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Thank you, Val. How about you? I'm doing excellent. I'm super excited about today's stream because we've got some pretty nifty things planned for everyone. Um, I also would like to point out um, something that I just saw in the chat just before we went live, and that was, <laughs> I think it was RB that just pointed out that it is VDV and VDV today. It's Voodoo Val and Victor Davila and 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 that is so true. And I feel like we are like a superhero duo this like this afternoon. Absolutely. It's meant to be. Yeah, this was this is like the stars are aligned. This is perfect. <laughs> this is this is <laughs> magical. Um, I see Shauna in the chat. Audra is still here. Audra's been hanging out on Adobe Live today, like literally all day, by the way. Um, awesome. Audra is our number one stan, and she is here to like be our cheerleader. Um, I see RB um, again, you, Chad, Kenzie, Laura, Colby, Amanda. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I'm gonna kind of friends. yes, a lot of friends, a lot of a lot, a lot of familiar of faces, and a lot mm -hmm. of new faces. So I I see we've got our buddies in chat today, and we also have a lot of people um, in the chat that we can make friends with today. So um, absolutely, I'm pumped about it. Uh, before I jump into kind of what this stream is about and what we're gonna be jumping into, I would like to make a few announcements. Number one, um, if you are over on the YouTube channel, please come over to behance.net/live because that is where I am reading the chat. That is where all the people are who I am greeting. So if you're wondering where are all these ghosts that Voodoo Val and Victor are talking to? They're on, <laughs> they're on Behance. Um, and also the design off, the nature of the design off means that all of you folks in the chat get to participate with us. Um, so this is not just me and Victor going to be designing today. We want you folks to create some work because towards the end of the stream tomorrow, we're actually going to pull up social media and take a look at what you have created, give you guys a spotlight um, and check that out. Um, but uh, before I talk about our theme and stuff, Victor, why don't you kind of introduce yourself for anyone who might not be familiar with you um, and sure. what you do? So my name is Victor Davila. I am an assistant professor at the University of Central Florida. And I'm also involved with a lot of the community organizations like AIGA, Creative Mornings Orlando, Giant Illustrator. So I'm really a big uh, passionate about community. And one of the organizations I'm, uh, I'm associated with, I'm an affiliate faculty for Limitless Solutions. And uh, which is what we're gonna be talking about today, what we're associated with today. At Limitless Solutions, we're a nonprofit that is associated with the University of Central Florida. And what we do is that we provide 3D printed arms uh, to, to kids with limb differences so that, they, uh, so, so that they'll have an arm that they, can, that, that they can use and it's helpful for them. And that's our, our main goal, that's our, our main uh, uh, mission. So it's it's a great organization. I I, I didn't uh, I, I didn't start it. It was started by Albert Monero and um, uh, a few of the other uh, guys over there. So um, I'm just lucky that they've allowed me to come and be part of them. I'm I'm really excited um, about uh, like kind of the whole uh, limitless. Um, company and, and everything. Thank you, Matt. I see Matt in the chat. It's good to see you, my friend, um, posting the link. Yes, welcome in. Um, Matt and Dabrowski is the creative director uh, over at Limitless. So if there's any questions that I can't answer, he, he'll be super um, helpful in answering them on the chat. So he's, yeah, yeah. he's amazing. Um, thank you for joining us, Matt. Um, it's super great to see you. Um, and it's, it's, it's really cool. Like, I, I, I'm really glad that we're kind of like jumping into the topic of Limitless and everything because what we are doing today for our theme, you folks know, we usually have like a, just a topic and everyone can like design according to that topic. But I'm going to jump over here to our dual stream screen where our work is because um, I have our theme set up over here. We are actually going to be um, creating um, and designing some cool designs. Um, for these with templates for um, for limitless so this is gonna be really cool um, I I thought that I would kind of take uh, my design today in like 
to like the realm of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. So I'm going to be doing some of that. Um, I am going to point out to everyone in the chat that there are um, art templates in the description below the video player on Behance. So if you would like to download a template um, of your own and, and design like a really cool um, concept for a, uh, a limitless arm, please do so um, because we want to see what you folks are going to create. We want to see what, uh, what, what you're going to design and uh, kind of see your imagination run wild. Um, before we jump into doing the work, however, one thing that I would like to um, point out, because this is something that I think is very important and something that Victor and Matt and I discussed, um, is we are designing um, some cool design for um, children with limb differences. Um, and in doing so, you know, that's a super cool thing, but we also wanna make sure that we keep this uh, family friendly and respectful because some of these designs, um, you know, they're, they're gonna be things that are, you know, that maybe a child would like to have um, uh, on, uh, on their on their limb. Um, so let's uh, work together as a community to to keep it appropriate. So let's steer clear of any um, horror themes, you know, and, and things that might be um, considered a little jarring or uh, maybe upsetting to a, a child who may have one of these arms. Um, I'm sure I don't have to, you know, say that, um, like, because there are so many wonderful, fabulous people in the chat, but I do want to call attention to it. So let's, uh, let's be positive and let's uh, design some really awesome awesome uh, limbs, shall we? Are you ready? I am ready. All righty. I'm absolutely ready. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to like start out. I've got like my, um, my, what I did, uh, the templates uh, that I chose was the shadow template. Um, and so you folks who are downloading that template may see this exact, these exact same illustrations. I did kind of cut them out and arrange them in a way that I could understand with my brain, um, and then put them in my own little layout here. Um, but I'm going to start with grabbing some colors. So if anyone wants to throw some color ideas into the chat, I am hmm. so down to use any colors that people suggest. Um, uh, what kind of what kind of colors and things do you think you'll be going with today, Victor? Well, if we're doing the Spider Verse and we're doing kind of like comic in, er, uh, comic inspired or comic movie inspired stuff, I'll probably try to stick close to the primary colors, uh, although not necessarily exactly as as saturated as some of those primary colors could be. But I'm going to try to keep with the more kind of traditional kind of colors just to keep it super here. We sounds How about good. You? Yeah, I'm 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 kind of like gonna stick with like um red and blue and maybe like a splash of something a little more vibrant. Like maybe get some like kind of a like a purple gradient in there, I'm thinking. I like that. Um but uh I, I think I'm gonna try my best to like maybe choose some interesting like off colors um as well just to kind of make it a little more unique and i don't know I, I wonder if anyone in chat if you folks know if there's like any kind of term for this but i almost want to say because i i also um i also play instruments i'm also I'm like uh oh. not like i'm not like any kind of like fabulous musician but i do play instruments and so i guess in like a musical term i would call these like sharp colors you know like there's there's the right. notes and then there's the, the sharp and flat notes so i'm kind of going for like sharp colors instead of like the the traditional like you know um uh primary so i wonder does any is there a is there a term <laughs> like that for for art colors like rather than primary just something else i don't know i don't know i feel like th if there is it can't be any better than sharp colors i like that okay. idea because it, we know exactly what you're talking about when you say those sharp colors you know yeah just something like a little um a little uh i think another another term that i like to say like when i'm when i'm doing like a um like designing a creature or character um mm -hmm. i like sour colors too like there's green and there's like a sour green so um i, I like that as well um and i know exactly the colors you mean every time you use sour or sharp so i think we should keep yeah. those colors okay cool as if you're down if you're down for it i'm just gonna say yeah. i'm gonna come to this win and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna <laughs> All right. Um, I'm also right. going to like kind of sketch around too and like try to see. So I have like my 
arms kind of organized into groups, but I can like choose some colors and then grab like a sketchy brush and see about how I'm going to actually break these up into um, the the designs. Because it'd be cool like if we're going to do like a Spider-Verse kind of thing, adding like a hint of um, like that spider web kind of pattern, you know, would mm -hmm. be cool. But then also like I was kind of looking at how like spider gwen's outfit is and like yeah. she goes like in like a totally different like way with everything where everything is like it's like spider-man but it's also sleek and um kind of feminine where she kind of like breaks the rules with the it's not just like the red on blue on white she has like the sour colors the, <laughs> the sharp colors the <laughs> you know um steve has Typed was just, oh, that's one of my favorite words, Steve. Besmirched. <laughs> I was just saying. Yes, I don't know who's who's besmirching who um, in the in the chat, but <laughs> it's just a really, a really great word. Um, a muted yellow, Jessica Tam. Absolutely. I think that is a fabulous idea. I'm going to throw that in. So one of the things I might add too with the for the for the um, chat that the audience that's going to actually draw some of these things is that I think you can take them two different ways. One of them is take the template that we have um, that you've provided and kind of like decorate on them. Mm -hmm. um, and by decorate, I mean kind of like the surface. Uh, design the surface is a better expression than decoration. Design on the surface. And the other um, direction you can do is to actually design like the physical elements of the actual. Um, of the actual arm, uh, the actual bionic arm. So mm. for instance, if you have um, a shape or if it kind of molds past what the um, uh, the original shape could be, um, feel free to add things to it. Yeah, yeah. And just kind of like, like break the mold, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm into that. Um, also, we've got some great uh, uh, colors in the chat. We've got um, purple. I like how Ariana, puts a little a little cough a hem at the end because I am the queen of purple. You 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 had to go. know if we're gonna do any <laughs> art, like there's gonna be there's gonna be voodoo purple. Um, we've got uh, maroon, we've got um, muted yellow, we've got teal, um, we've got uh, royal blue. Ooh, ooh, I like. I'm uh, so also I also want to point out while I'm choosing these colors. Um, I, you guys are saying like royal blue. I am just like color picking a random color that seems like royal blue to me. I am in no way a master of colors. And I'm not just going to be like, ah, yes, royal blue with the code number F34. Like, it's not going to happen. But, <laughs> but <laughs> the idea of royal blue, not the exact royal blue, but whatever close element we have. Gotcha. Exactly. Also, yes, I was, I was remembering that Steve, um, Earlier, uh, somebody brought up Star Wars, which is always a dangerous thing to do when I am around. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and Steve Festus Kasaboom besmirched Adam Driver, and I'm still peeved about it. Um, I don't appreciate <laughs> the besmirching of Kylo Ren um, because he's precious. But um, anyways, <laughs> Periwinkle awesome. Blue, that's a good one, too. I think that's like a... I actually had an argument with my younger brother just recently where we were talking about periwinkle and he was like, it's purple. And I was like, it's, it's actually, it's funny you say that it's, but it's, it's periwinkle. And he was like, no, um, it is a, it is a purple color. And I was like, yeah, that's close, but it's, it's more of a periwinkle, which is a real color. And he's like, I don't think so. So, um, periwinkle awesome. fans unite in the chat. It is, it is a color and it's wonderful. <laughs> Uh, I see an emerald green. Ah, uh, yes. Some good old emerald green. One of the dangers of this chat is going to be me remembering to draw and not look at you while you're drawing. <laughs> I keep looking at the screen. I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be working. Yeah, I, I have to remind myself too sometimes because I start having so much fun, you know, and then I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm literally conducting a broadcast right now. Maybe <laughs> I maybe I should draw. Um all right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, like, just start doing, like, the first round of, of color on this. Um, and I think what's going to happen is I'm going to design uh, 
the top, like the front kind of top down view of this first and then once i find a design i like i will move into the other views of okay um of it and kind of follow suit so to speak so let me see about so i'll probably and like you can see on my on my uh, board here i have a bunch of different um uh, templates in the background. So what I'll probably end up doing, I like to sketch a lot and I like to kind of just like sketch quickly and put my ideas out there. Mm -hmm. So if I'll probably draw a few of these different arms, maybe apply some color to them. And then the one that I like, the one that I think is the strongest, or maybe we can let it to chat, leave it to chat. Oh yeah. Um, that that um, I'll take that one to Illustrator and finish it off. Sounds good to um, me. So yeah. I am, um, I've had an idea that, um, cause we were kind of discussing um, before we jumped into um, this the stream was that like, we do have like a really interesting kind of juxtaposition of style here today, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that what I'm gonna do too, like kind of before I lay down the um, first initial color, I've, I've changed my mind almost immediately, um, is that I am going to kind of paint in um, some some highlights and shadows here to really give this like a serious 3d form um, and then i will overlay my base color and kind of see how it's looking um because then we'll have like um kind of a like a painterly uh vibe going and um uh, i guess i would i don't know how you classify your style i i classify things like painterly um and then um when i say illustration i usually mean people who do like line art type stuff mm -hmm. but i know that that's not the same way everyone else classifies it what would you what would you call your style of of working mine is a lot of it would be cartoony straight up cartoons i mean i i grew up watching um Bugs Bunny cartoons and mm. things like that. And Disney, when I was a kid, I wanted to be one of Disney's nine old men. You know, I wanted to be a Disney animator. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the, yeah, so you know what I'm talking about? Nine yes. Old men. Um, and Termite Terrace from Warner Brothers and all that stuff. And I wanted to, so a lot of my work is straight up like thick lined, um, uh, thick outlines, but I try to um, adapt with styles. So um, while a lot of my stuff is geared towards um, towards uh, children's stuff, mm -hmm. children's illustration, highlights magazine, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I do try to adapt it, but regardless of whether it's a little bit more rendered, a little bit more simple, they all always seem to have like that thick line. Uh, uh, so it's probably something along the lines of, of very graphic illustration. I'm not painterly at all. I admire uh, people like you who, who could uh, do illustration like that, um, but it's nothing, it's, it's, it's not a... Um, a mode of work that I ever kind of picked up on. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. I, I, I think I, you know, and it's funny, I think you and I kind of think maybe the same way about each other's work because something that I have been trying to do like kind of in my daily, um, work is try to elaborate a little bit more on lines and i i've been trying to do it because like i noticed that when i start painting there we're like sometimes just full-on painting something like with no line art just like diving into like boom there's the mm -hmm. there i'm just blocking in shapes and whatever can be really cool um but sometimes i want something a little more elaborate and so the easiest way i found to do that is by doing cleaner line work and like really fleshing out the idea that I'm going for. Um, but I'm actually very unaccustomed to doing that. Um, and it's something that I'd like to, I'd like to get better at because I am used to just like, um, sometimes if I, if I'm going to sketch, uh, I will do so very, very loosely. And it's not something that ever really looks like anything finished at all. By the time I start like putting, like throwing paint on the canvas. Um, and I think that that has worked for me for a long time because painting is very impressionistic. Um, and so having a sketch that's not really super fleshed out, um, you still get that impressionistic vibe where it could be anything still, even though there's lines. Mm -hmm. um, and so my brain kind of 
handles that a little bit better but yeah I've been I have been working towards trying to kind of solidify my lines a little bit more for certain projects um, and it is a uh, it is something that I am a bit envious of um, and I need a little more work at because sometimes once you try something that you never really do you realize man I need some work <laughs> so um, it's uh, it's pretty cool so I I, I admire your uh, your workflow and your uh, your style as well <laughs> Thank Victor. You. Isn't it funny how that works? We're always kind of like, oh man, I wish I could do what she does. Yeah, um, grass always is always like greener. The... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, somebody is telling Steve that he's going to feel my wrath, which is, I assume means that he's still besmirching Star Wars, um, and I refuse to look. I refuse to. <laughs> oh, Steve. I refuse to see it. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, yeah, see, even Sam Peterson, you walk a dangerous line, sir. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. Yeah, it's, it's Alex Lazarus earlier was was uh, cruising for a bruising, as Steve says, with the besmirching of Star Wars as well. Um, Andrew is in chat uh, making up some excellent words, which I love. Um, uh, let's see. You can get a copy of the Zeal Zine. Oh! Zeal Zine. Oh, yeah. Zeal Zine. I, I always say Zine, and I know that that's not how you say it, but it's... I, I've... I, I read the word before I heard the word. So now that's like always how it is in my head. It's just zine and, or zine. No, zine. So now when people are like a zine, I'm like, that makes more sense because magazine. But at the magazine, same time, yeah. I'm like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> you be you. Yeah. I, I wonder if anyone else has any like design terms that they kind of feel that way about. I, I'm also sometimes the same way about... Um, opacity or opacity or um um gaussian blur or gaussian blur gaussian i don't blur, know yeah. i'm not sure what but do, what do you call a movie about a, a a real person uh a movie about a oh b-i-o-p-i-c a biop oh, oh, a, a, what is it B wait wait say it again b-i-o-p-i-c oh b-i-o P.I. Biopic? It's, which is, Bio, so, is it? um, I always pronounce it a biopic, like Bio. biography. And, oh. but I've seen, I've heard people call it a biopic, like, like if, uh, like you just said, like if somebody's nearsighted. Oh, wow. So there's like all those little words that every now and then kind of prop up. That's so interesting. I, I was, I didn't even like think about, I mean, of course there would be a word for that, like when it comes to like movie terms, but, I um, I kind of think about things like that in like book terms, you know, like a like a biography or something. But maybe yeah. that's a little insight into like how things are are pronounced. Do you know? Do you know what the 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 most like uh, used version? yeah the most used version of that is? I don't. I always thought it was biopic, but on the radio, I've started hearing biopic. Bio, you know, like the other one. Biopic. So I, I I'm going to assume. Interesting. Yeah. So when um, when the the chat, when the audience is doing, what do we call them? The audience, right? The chat. The I said, I just say chat. What's up, chat? What's up? What's up chat? <laughs> when the chat is working on their own technology um, or their own um, um, limb designs. Mm -hmm. um, I'd almost, one of the things I'm really interested in seeing it, but one of the things I'd like to encourage them is to kind of just like, just go all out on ideas. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of like the stupid, quote unquote, stupid idea. Mm -hmm. And I say quote unquote, because I think a lot of great ideas start off as quote unquote, stupid ideas. Like, um, you know, at one point they thought Disney, Disneyland was going to be a, was a stupid idea. And then it turned out to be awesome. And now there's so, grown adults um, who will waste their whole paycheck just to hang out there. Exactly. So, so <laughs> it's, it's exactly right. So I encourage you guys just to kind of go a little bit big. So the, the beauty of, of Limitless is that they have this, it's this, it's this collaboration of artists and, and, um, and uh, engineers. And it's like the whole Pixar thing where art challenges the technology and technology inspires the art. Mm -hmm. So usually we can start with an idea. It's like, why don't we try this? And then the people, the team who's actually constructing them would be say, would say, all right, this is possible or this is impossible right now, but let's do the best we can. So 
Um, I'm always kind of like, you know, let's go big for these initial ideas. Let's go as big as we can. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If we can kind of rein it back, but if um, it's easier to rein things back, then start small and try to go bigger. Yeah, yeah, so, you're right. So hopefully tomorrow we can see some things that are really kind of like, um, oh, and can I say one more thing about Limitless? Yeah, if, please, if please. Um, when you when you're creating these, one of the one of the great things about the the kids that um, are are bionic kids, what we call them, is that they are not, they are so full of energy. They're so amazing, and I think a lot of times we get this idea that they're that they're bummed out, they're sad, um, they have a limb difference, and it's affecting their life in some way that's making them sad or whatever. But the complete opposite is what's true. Mm. So um, when we give them these these arms, you can tell like the looks on their faces that they're so stoked. They're so happy as to what they're doing. So um, so I think we can inject some of that personality into the uh, into the arms as well. Something yeah. lively, uh, something that you think, um, if you think it's really cool, chances are the kids are gonna be uh, uh, thinking it's really cool. So just, you know, I'm really stoked to be seeing what people design tomorrow. Yeah, me too. I'm really excited to see like kind of how people let their imaginations um, run with this. And uh, um, I think, I, I really like what you said, um, just kind of like, you know, I think, yeah, you're right, like a general idea about, um, you know, children with a limb difference is that people assume that it's, it's so um, affecting them in like such a negative way and everything, but kind of learning more about Limitless and um, looking at the, um, the images and things and going through like your year in review and um, looking, just looking at all of these children who are involved and who have um these arms i see like nothing but absolute joy um and right. you know i ima i imagine like how like amazing and super cool it it must be to have a limb difference and also you guys do a really you guys are very also too like like here's these limbs here's these arms and you know they're super awesome and what you know what child wouldn't be thrilled to have one of these but also um you guys seem to really hit home and and show that like you know you have a limb difference but having the arm that we have created is not what makes you whole and 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 great you are right. amazing all on your own and you guys have a you guys have a comic i believe as well so there's too. this yeah, one of our, our bionic kids, his name's uh, uh, Zach. He's out of uh, uh, Seattle. Uh, him and his brother, Christo, Christo and his dad, Nico, um, uh, Zach and Christo created the bionic kid, which was this story about uh, um, a superhero bionic kid. And it's based on, out of a um, situation that Zach had where uh, this kid, he, they were out and about and this kid, a uh, different kid, saw his limb difference and was picking on them. So instead of kind of getting sad about it and kind of bummed out about it, uh, Zach created the superhero um, to teach other kids mm -hmm. how it isn't a big, uh, it, it's it's not anything to be, uh, it's, uh, a big difference to have a limb difference. It's, you know, they're all kids in the same way. And um, so that uh, other kids can read it and, and uh, feel like they're accepted into um uh it, by the other kids yeah yeah Sorry. I, I no sometimes it can it. be interesting like like talking about things and also designing on the stream so it's like you know you yeah. start you, you start getting into it and then you're like carrying on your point and then you're also drawing so it's it's all good <laughs> yeah. and that window popped up and it threw me off I was like what did i just press that that thing came up? <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of threw my threw, threw off my uh, what I was saying. I see we got um, we got Robzilla in the chat too. By the way, welcome in Rob. Rob's amazing. How are you doing, Rob? Yeah, Rob is 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 fabulous. Um, Matt also says um, we actually have a Nerf shooter attachment in the works. Have fun with the ideas. So yes, folks, there is <laughs> there is in the works is like a, an attachment that shoots uh, Nerf darts. I think right from from the arm yes. which is the most yeah. incredible thing i've ever heard of um so yeah. yeah uh please please let your imaginations carry you um into um a wonderful world um i think what you said specifically about like do like the the quote unquote stupid idea um 
uh, is it's always as somebody who like really truly enjoys like movies and shows and, and, and fiction and writing fiction and all these things. One of my favorite points and moments in any um, amazing story is when, you know, there are, the characters are about to pull off this incredible heist. They're trying to figure out a way through like mm -hmm. this unbeatable situation and somebody poses a, uh, a solution and they say something like, that is insane, but it just might work. That's the exactly. kind of level of design I'm looking to see. I want to see something insane, but maybe something that we can actually work out. Like, let's, let's do it. Absolutely. Right. So I had the bright idea of doing a version of the arm that had like the Venom symbiote starting to oh, get on yeah. it. And I'm like, what does the Venom symbiote look like? It, I don't I know, like, like tar kind of like. Yeah, right. So, yeah. So if you guys have no idea what I was, where I was going with this, that's what it is. It's meant to be like uh, a Venom symbiote kind of wrap. I, um, I love it. I'm here for maybe it. Maybe we can have like one of them could have like a. Does Venom have nails? Oh, we'll go with that. I think he does. I think he does, but I think it's all kind of like connected into the general like form of the hand. Like I don't think that they're separate from the fingers in gotcha. any ways. In any way. Gotcha. So more like claws. Yeah. Yeah. Got and anytime somebody says like Venom and stuff, I just think of um what my brother says is the best Spider Man movie of all time. Um, I think it's Spider-Man three with the dance number. I yeah, just imagine really? like he just theory. went, yeah, he's, he won't, he won't budge on that either. And I know I've, I've met like several people that also won't budge on that. But anytime we start talking about Spider-Man and, and, and Venom, I just think of the, uh, the good old snap and dance number, um, that yeah. I've never been able to erase from my brain. <laughs> And Topher Grace, Topher Grace as the as Venom. I yeah. haven't seen the Tom Hardy one. I have not either, actually. Um, and I was, I was, I was debating whether or not to, but I kind of, I kind of want to because I can see how like it would be like a font of inspiration for like painting and things. It's typically mm -hmm. what happens for me is I, I, I watch something and I'm like, oh my gosh, this movie, and then I like have to paint something directly after. Um, but I yeah. also sometimes I have to like curb my enthusiasm for watching certain movies because if I have other work I'm supposed to be doing and then I watch something that I absolutely love or at least something that like gives me inspiration, then I will like procrastinate and not do what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I, I would love to know if, um, if there's anybody in chat that wants to share like one of their, their favorite like sources of inspiration kind of pop culture wise like because we're i mean obviously we're doing like like spider-man into the spider-verse stuff today and we might jump into some other interesting um kind of concepts later on um today or tomorrow uh, so i i want to know like what 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 is it for for you folks in chat though like kind of um maybe a maybe a franchise that like hands down always can like kind of give you inspiration for creativity um I think my top one, obviously, very surprising. No one's going to have seen this coming, but you know I love me some Star Wars. Uh, so that's what's your favorite Star Wars movie? Um, I'm tied between uh, Empire Strikes Back and Rogue One, and I know that you know I'm not going to get into like all of the, you know arguments and stuff about the movies because then then they will kick me off <laughs> then they will be like all right you're fun val but no more no more star wars debate but um uh, i really thought that um rogue one was super super fun and i was from like a a, a, a design standpoint um, it was incredible to be able to see all of the things from the original movies, but done in mm -hmm. like next gen graphics, essentially. Um, and uh, so I got to see like all like, you know, before it was designers creating like miniature models and then filming those just so. So it looked like, you know, space battles and, you know, doing yeah. the best special effects that they could manage and, and all that stuff. But um, now we got to see like, you know, we got to see those star fights. We got to see everything that they were conveying the best that they could back in the day. And that was just really phenomenal. And from a writing standpoint, I was like, 
how are they going to make me fall in love with characters when I know that all of them are going to perish? Um, because I already knew from from just being a fan of the originals that the folks that go and, and retrieve that information, um, you know, kind of sacrifice themselves for the, the good of all people. Um, and so they did it, though. I was like, wow, this is okay. All right. We got it. This is, I'm, mm -hmm. I have much respect, much love, Star Wars. So I had a good time. And also, I love me a good droid. Like, you know, they, the Star Wars always has these sassy droids. Um, and uh, K2SO was just a gem. Um, I loved it. <laughs> what about um, you? Are you a Star Wars guy? And do you have a, do you have a favorite Star Wars movie? I, I am. Uh... And I agree with you. I think my favorite is when I was growing up, it was always Empire. Mm -hmm. But Rogue One came out and I loved Rogue One. When when Darth Vader came out in that scene, hopefully spoilers. Oh my gosh, it's been a few yes. years, so everybody's like actually seen it, right? Mm -hmm. So um so my the the my my inner ten year old self, uh, my head exploded in that scene just because it was kind of like finally we get to see yes! uh, Darth Vader being being what uh, yeah. Can you guys? Then, I'm gonna have gifts of me tomorrow of me just reacting to you talking about Darth Vader and waving my hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a big soundtrack. I love soundtracks. Oh, yeah. and I love the John Williams original science soundtracks. He's like in a league of his own. But I thought the Michael Giacchino soundtrack of that movie was was amazing. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I uh, I think so. For me, one of my thing, and it was like. I mean, we can we can even tie this. I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be an absolute nerd and and tie this back into design. Um, and that is that when I when I when I watch Star Wars, one of the things that Star Wars does consistently, um, no matter what you think of the new movies or the old movies or whatever, is um, the the cinematic shots for Star Wars films are always larger than than life. Um, a lot of people consider um, Star Wars to be like a sci-fi kind of thing, um, but it mm -hmm. is a space opera. Um, yeah. It is, it, it, and 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 the the cinematography and the um, uh, the composition for, you know, just like showing off these worlds um, is very, very important. And so whenever I see them, I, I, I have to, I have to create. But one of the things um, that really got me in um, Rogue One and like um, the, some of the newer films that, that came out was that they are so visually gorgeous and um, give me so much inspiration for how I could like line up my own um, kind of paintings and things that I have to yeah. um, design myself. But that, that scene with Darth Vader was so striking because it was like through the gloom and darkness, here is this lightsaber all of the sudden. And I, 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 I yelled in the theater. Um, like, <laughs> I'm sure no one's, no one's surprised at that either. But like, as soon as the, I was like, oh my gosh, they're actually about to give us a Darth Vader fight which they have never really done in any of the films. Yeah. Like we got to see him sort of in action, but not really, not like the comic books and stuff. So when he ignited his lightsaber, I was like, number one, I'm going to paint that. Number two, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was cool. I want to know, I want to know about, um, uh, rip headphone users. I'm sorry. Did I scream? <laughs> I scream. <laughs> um, uh, Elizabeth, it's good to see you. Welcome in. Um, Omar is talking about The Mandalorian, also another excellent source of just fabulous cinematography. Um, another another really impressive uh, bit of, of film um, cinematography-wise. And not, I mean, obviously great writing and everything, and I know that not everybody is um, kind of a horror buff like me, but um, the... Uh, the Haunting of Hill House has some of the most visually gorgeous um, uh, scenes and shots I've ever seen. And they, they, one thing that I really like to see in in film um, that is also very inspiring to me is uh, when when they do continuous shots, like a huge scene that is like one gigantic mm -hmm. shot. And they did one that was like 
uh, several minutes long in in the haunting of Hill House that was gorgeous and and same with like Star Wars films the haunting of Hill House also had these really striking colors and just visually gorgeous combinations in that manner that was like I I have to make art thanks Netflix <laughs> I have to make art right now um, do you do you do you read a lot of books or like are you a are you a book guy Victor I am. I am. I don't read them as much as I, um, as I'd like to, but I am, um, like, I like, um, I like all sorts of stories, but I like a lot of like Cormac McCarthy. I like the way he writes. It's just so detailed. Mm. Um, I, you know, things like that. I, if a movie's come, coming out, I try to watch the movie before the, uh, I, I try to read the book before the movie comes Same. out. So, I, Same. Uh, so like the Martian I read and things like that. Um, no country for old men. The oh, road. That kind of stuff. I have not read No Country for for Old Men, but I did see that film, and that was a a pretty pretty fantastic film. I thought. Um, if you saw The Road, The Road was pretty much exactly like the book. With That's uh, one of the movies with uh, Viggo Strider. And, yeah, Strider. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. of him in in Lord of the Rings terms, but yes. <laughs> yes. Great movie. Great movie. Uh, Carmen, Julia, uh. Davila, is that is that a uh, someone from someone from the uh, the Victor Squad? That is my mother. Oh, my mother in the <laughs> hello, hello, Carmen. Hi, it is wonderful to make your acquaintance. Um, she says, "I am not an artist, but I am definitely an appreciator of art and talent. I do love reading. Don't make fun. Harry Potter books were always a sense of inspiration to me. I read the books way before. Um, Carmen, I am in the same boat as you. You are among friends. Um, I am a Harry Potter fan, um, and I am a a big uh, I'm, I'm big into fiction. I love to write fiction. I love to consume fiction. Um, I love." Uh, like stuff like Harry Potter. Um, I'm also a fan of like uh, recently um, Brandon. I think it's Brandon Sanderson, uh, not Brian Sanderson. Um, uh, he did like the Mistborn series and stuff. I just started reading him. Um, big Kim Harrison fan. Uh, big uh, Faith Hunter fan. So um, you are you are among friends certainly. Hi mom. <laughs> Hi mom. That's literally like the uh the 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 cliche i'm on the news and i'm gonna say hello to my mother but it's like works perfectly that's awesome i'm glad she's here i'm i'm she's glad awesome. she's here too i'm excited so let me tell you a little bit about my mother she is she, both of my parents have always been you know how you hear somebody and say like yeah my parents wanted me to be a uh uh, a doctor they didn't want to be an art artist mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. uh all that stuff my parents always supported anything we any of us ever wanted to do Aww. so there was never kind of a things like I, I want you to be a doctor you want to be an artist but so as soon as as soon as they knew that uh i wanted to be an artist or my sisters wanted to be a teacher they'd come home with like reams of paper i was like here you go practice or or a, a chalkboard for my sister or you know all that stuff for for us so there's super support i think supportive supportive uh um, families and supportive kind of like foundation goes a long way for any development of anybody amazing and i always had that so uh, between my my wife and kids and my family uh growing up um it's always been it's always been a thing yeah that's so, yeah. you know Thanks, i mom. i had a i had a similar experience with my mom um my my mother my mother supported my art um throughout some of probably what i would consider like the most embarrassing moments of it um mm -hmm. from me like getting in trouble um in school for drawing too much during class to um i i discovered um i <laughs> so i i decided like i was going to draw in class in the third grade and i i don't know um why but i also decided like that my third third grade um uh, English segment of class would be an excellent time um, to do like old Renaissance kind of sketches and stuff, which mm -hmm. um, not as many clothes as I think my teacher would have preferred that my my art subjects, you know, to be wearing. Um, and I remember I got in trouble 
at at school and they they called my mother in this was like the beginning of her i think kind of like i i got you boo kind of i'm gonna support your art um they called her in and they said your daughter was drawing um unclothed figures in class what are we going to do about this and my mom said well what's so bad about that you know, were they, were they, were they bad drawings? And they're like, no, it was in a, it was inappropriate. And she was like, listen, my daughter is allowed to draw unclothed figures as much as she wants, as long as it's not my unclothed figure. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that was, and that was that. And I don't, I don't think that they appreciated that very much, but I sure did. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I also had um, a very supportive mother. Um, so um, kudos to you, um, Lady Carmen, and uh, and uh, yes, congrats to you, Victor. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, it's it's kind of an it's kind of an interesting ride, um, kind of deciding that art is is what you'd like to do and 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 a journey that you would like to take. I'm sure there's a lot of people in chat who um, are. Uh, a little conflicted um, about it. I know I see a lot of people in the chat who are like, well, what do I do? How do I make this uh, a job? How do I, how do I convince people that it is my job? That's, that was a big one for me of just like what people are like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I want to be an artist. And they're like, I think one of the main questions that I got after that was like, okay, that's cool. But how, how will you eat? Um, and it's so, it sucks to hear that you know, because people have like, I think there's a stereotype and a stigma that kind of goes with trying to be a professional artist. But um, one of the things that I like to tell people, and maybe this will help anyone in chat who's, you know, kind of making their way, making their way downtown. Um, maybe. <laughs> um, I think that being a freelance artist is 100% doable for anyone so long as you are realistic in your plans. Um, I think that it's, it's not even really a matter of, of working, you know, tirelessly day and night to make the dream come true because I am a, 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 a big, um, big into the idea of working smart, not hard, uh, mm -hmm. because that saves a lot of time and you don't have to be, you don't have to end every design work day with a kink in your neck you know, and, a, and an ache in your back. You don't have to do that. Um, but I think that really anyone can, if they really want to go into the design workforce, um, you can, if you are, like I said, if you're realistic about what you can do, your expectations, and how you're going to succeed. I think that it uh, an example maybe of something that's unrealistic is thinking that every single day you're going to show up to work as a freelance artist and you're going to absolutely love what you do for the entire day and it's just going to be like this journey of bliss and happiness constantly. Um, it is a job. You still show up to work and think, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this project I'm working on or whatever, you know. Um, and if you learn how to utilize social media um, uh, properly, you learn how to network properly, you learn to understand what sort of, um, uh, I guess, content people who are your target audience desire to consume, like things like that. I think that anyone can, can really push themselves into a pretty decent career. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not something that I always thought, you know, like I, I used to be like ter pretty terrified, like maybe people are right and maybe I am going to starve and I'm not going to have, you know, the kinds of, uh, the kind of work that I want. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's in my experience, like keeping realistic expectations and not, not fooling myself has been like a really big help in kind of keeping myself going. And I wonder what, uh, let's see how much time we have here. We have, yeah, we have a, we have a, a, a few minutes, I think. Um, I wonder what your experience has been like just kind of doing design and, and, and how things have worked out for you and maybe what your experiences versus what you assumed about doing this kind of work, like, like how they differ and how they are similar. So, um, 
you know, there's there's that John Lennon song that that says, "Life is what happens while you're busy making other plans." Mm -hmm. For all the Beatles and John Lennon fans out there, mm -hmm. um, and that's absolutely true. I think at some point I thought I'd have like, uh, I'd like I said I'd be a Disney or something. I, I wanted to be an animator, but then I got into graphic design, and I really ended up like really really loving it, and um, and it still allowed me to do things with with um, uh, illustration and graphic design. Just open certain doors that mm -hmm. that um that i think i wouldn't have had otherwise with with other careers if i were if i were to kind of like um oops, if i were to like uh just do um uh like a specific thing i think uh the beauty of graphic design and what we do is that it's it has a lot of potential with different different industries so you can still be an animator you can still be an illustrator you can still be a, a, a bunch of different things and um I, I discovered that a little bit slowly. I still had aspirations to be other things, but then um, I, I just started really enjoying graphic design and then I started teaching and I, and teaching's like the, the, the greatest gig mm -hmm. um, just because you get to like hang out with people, students who are really stoked about what they're doing and you know, I you talk about design so, yeah. all day. Oh. Um, so if you, if you ever have the opportunity, I'd highly encourage you to do it. Um, but uh, it's, it wasn't what I ended up, it wasn't what I was planning on doing, but I'm happy this is how it turned out uh, or how it's turning out. I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm done, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah. but, um, but, but yeah, so the beauty of graphic design or, or what, what we do is just, it has, it has a little bit of everything. And the other thing that I would encourage people to do is find a community, mm. find a community of, of people who to support you. If you don't have uh, support in one place, you know, you can possibly find it elsewhere. And I got lucky with, with my family, um, my parents, my sisters, my wife, my kids. But then I was also lucky to find communities, whether it's uh, AIGA or, or uh, um, UCF. Uh, Matt and I, Matt Dombrowski and I have known each other since grad school. So it's like you meet people and it's people who inspire you to do things and and kind of support you as you as you uh as you go as you move forward and the same thing with you know a lot of the people in this chat right now andrew i met at creative south and he's been a, a great supporter of everything that i've ever uh, uh tried to do since i've known him and shauna shauna so we um uh i started something called giant illustrators because there wasn't an illustration collective in orlando so if you don't if you can't find your community, just build your community. So, yeah, yeah. um, so Sean and that's how Sean and I met when she was in Orlando. And, uh, and, uh, it's, it's been, you know, it's, it's, it's people that you can talk to share stories with commiserate sometimes, um, yeah. and surround yourself by people who inspire you. Uh, the, the guys at, at um, uh, not the, guy, the people at limitless solutions, uh, whether it's Albert, who is one of the smartest people I've ever met. He's, He's like Tony Stark level of creative type, you know, that kind <laughs> yeah. of thing. So he is, and John and Dominique and Angie and Radula and of course Matt and everybody else, all the students that are involved there, they they bring a, they inspire you to to do so much more. They bring something out of me that makes me want to participate even more. Colby uh, Kleitz, who's a streamer. Uh, for Adobe, and he's one of my former students. He was he worked at Limitless Solutions for for a while as well. Amazing. And um, as a student, so it's just kind of like this great community that you surround that you can surround yourself by, and um, and uh, hopefully the the right community will bring things out of you that you weren't aware that you had in you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So that's my that's my rant. I'm sorry, that was more of a rant. No, that was answer. that was that was great though. <laughs> I I loved it. Um, and on on the subject of uh, of community um, and support and and being uh, kind of um, in person or or online and and meeting creatives, um, we are coming to the very end of our stream here. I can't believe it's already been an hour. But um, if you would like to kind of share where we can find you online and and stuff, that would be really great because I'm sure every Everyone is wanting to to kind of keep up with your work. Um, so it looks like um, Sam has posted uh, uh, your Behance and your your portfolio. Um, but is there any place else, Thank like you. a Twitter or an Instagram or something, we can uh, we can check out? So pretty much all the social media, whether it's Twitter or Instagram or Dribble, it's Vic Davila okay. at Vic Davila, and then my website is Victor Davila. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, dot com. 
And then so. uh, one thing that I also want to point out is maybe we can get the uh, the Limitless uh, link in here too, so people can check out uh, the Limitless site. Um, and then I see that my uh, links to Instagram and Twitter on there, those are the best places to kind of check me out and and, uh, and get a hold of me. Um, we are uh, coming to the end um, of our time, but uh, Victor, it was an absolute pleasure getting to create and design with you today. It was so much fun. I had a lot of fun. I had a, I had a great time. Uh, and thank you for having us. Thank you for supporting Limitless. Limitless can be found at Limitless, uh, Limitless 3D. Limitless is with a B, L-I-M-B, I-T-L-E-S-S 3D on Instagram. Awesome. Um, and I believe it's also the same one on Twitter. Um, and it's at limitless-solutions.org. Wonderful. Is the, uh, um, so we will get that link in there. Um, it is time for us to take off. We've got maybe 45 seconds here before the show, um, must end. Um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure. Um, thank you very much. Thank you chat, uh, for coming to hang out with us. We look forward to seeing your designs tomorrow. So please, uh, kind of design, uh, using the templates that are in the description below our video, because we want to see what kind of limbs you folks, um, create. And that is all the time we've got to, for today. So adios, everybody. We will see you tomorrow, same bat time, same bat place. Thank you.